Hey there. So today is Saturday, April 9th, which makes this the week 14 <laughs> Create Brilliance 2022 update. I was about to say return to creativity, but you know, after a year of saying that, it, it, it's a hard habit to break. Good song. Um, so let's jump into some creative project updates. So first off, on the knitting needles, I am edging ever closer. Let's see, I have four more rows to go to finish the first section of the um, Hercule Poirot Holidays shawl. And uh, I'm trying to kind of spread it out a little. The variegated yarn is pretty dark. And um, so I know you can see the color variations, but I don't know if you can see the pattern all that well at this point but close up you can kind of see that it's um it's got a little bit of like a basket weave kind of going i don't know that's that's hard to get it to focus on but anyway so this is going <laughs> a few rows at a time because you know um it's not a mindless knit it's not one of those things where you get to a point and you could just you just keep going and going. No, this one, this one is pretty complicated. Um, probably one of the more complicated patterns I've done. And uh, I'm doing really, doing my utmost to make sure that I do it right. <laughs> I have had to tink or knit back. E-I-N-K is knit spelled backwards. So yeah, when you realize that you've gotten off on a, you know, in the stitch combination, you have to like, knit back to get the stitches back, you know, <laughs> undo just a few stitches to find out where your issue was. So I've had to do that on a couple of rows, not entire rows, just get back to where I was confident, you know, that things were. Um, another thing, and I haven't talked about this in, ever <laughs> um, on this year's updates, but uh, I just kind of wanted to share. Um, so I'm a long-term planner user, paper planner user, got to write things down. Um, and this year I got, and I think I did mention this, you know, at some point that I'd ordered it, but that I couldn't use it yet because it wasn't the new year. But yeah, I got a Hobonichi Hecho 2022 Cousin. Um, and if I, Hobonichi is the company or designer, I think a Techo means planner or date book or something like that. Um, or maybe notebook. Um, and then cousin is the, the size and, and well, it's a five size, but cousin means that it has, um, both. Well, they, I think they, uh, it has monthly planning layouts. It has weekly planning layouts, the weekly verticals, like the week on two pages. And then it has, um, a page a day available. Whoops. I'm trying not to drop anything that's kind of interleaved in there. And one of the things I wanted to point out is that um, my goal had been when I got this um, was to really use the page a days for, you know, just tracking certain things. Yeah. But, um, but for journaling, because there's, there's a bunch of space here for each day and They've got like a time grid, but I don't use that since I'm already tracking, you know, like timed events um, in the weekly view, which I just, yeah, I held up before. This is the weekly view, and I found a YouTube video that kind of showed how they used it for planning and then, you know, planning ahead, but also um, noting, you know, what happened when. <laughs> Um, and, and so, yeah, I've been doing off and on. I haven't really been, there have been some weeks where it's just, I don't even look at it. Um, but starting this month, um, I wanted to really focus on, um, journaling in here. And so I have kept up with, and I keep showing these two pages because these are the last couple two days. Um, yeah, I've kept up with, um, you know. Just writing stuff down, things that I remember from the day or, or things that I, I think I may want to remember or things that I want to reflect on and stuff like that. And the days that I didn't write much on or just like 
ignored that the planner exists those pages are still there and you know i've seen some people go back and they'll use them for you know just uh you know like a little art journal kind of thing so who knows you know if i need scratch paper i'll go back and use those um but yeah so i've been i've been doing that and like you know using using some of my my stickers and stuff and just it's been fun so i just kind of wanted to mention that cuz you know even that counts as creativity journaling um, you know, maybe adding, maybe add some color, maybe add some stickers, may, you know, or, or not, you know, and that all counts as creativity and it's kind of a good unwind at the end of the day. The big project though is the giraffe project. I have, um, just under a week now to get this finished so that I can submit it for potential inclusion in the, um, Tom Collective summer exhibition. So yeah. I am, um, hmm. <sighs> yeah, but I made some really good headway on it this week and it will, it will get done. It'll get done. <laughs> the, uh, the sculpted face, the head, um, it's been given its first few coats of just like a base color, but I still have to do a lot of the fine detail printing or printing, <laughs> painting. Um, but I also, I can do that while simultaneously working on the other parts because I, the head is so fragile. I don't want to um, assemble the whole thing and then be moving it around a lot while I'm doing the finishing touches. So there's still a little ways before that's going to, you know, his body is going to have a head. But speaking of the body, ta-da! let me bring it down a little bit. But yeah, this is, this is the main part of the body and it, the seam is still open because I still do have to you know, insert the head and secure it around the little, the little notch I left around the neck so that ideally, you know, I can, you know, kind of tighten the seams around it. But yeah, so there's a neck. I have, I have little, um, like a quick ruffle, um, as the main of some of the darker fabrics that I was using. And of course, you know, the whole thing is, is crazy quilted and, and, uh, Shades of yellow, orange, brown, and various patterns. Um, so that's the body. And then I have like the whole, like a whole bowl full of legs. <laughs> a bowl of limbs, you know. So I still have to, you know, they're stuffed now. And what I did for the stuffing was um, I did not use polyfill. I ended up using... Um, uh, any of the off cuts where, you know, I quilted over the pattern piece and then trimmed, trimmed around the edges. Those went, I kept in a bag so that I could use them to stuff the bigger pieces. And also, um, I'd cut way too many, way more than I needed of, um, the little squares and whatever, um, not really squares, the pieces, uh, for the, the scraps for the, um, crazy quilting. And so I use those to stuff as well. And then I didn't quite have enough between all of that. So I got out an old t-shirt that I had put aside to make use like for a rag rug in the future. And that was enough. Actually, I have a little bit left over. But yeah, that was enough to finish stuffing him. And he's, he's quite stable. Um, he's not like super heavy, but he's quite dense. Um, and the reason why I, I, I used the fabric to stuff the um, sculpture here um, is because while cottons, cottons are one thing they're, you know, they do degrade. Um, they are biodegradable. I pretty much, I think um, they, they, you know, um, a lot of the um, mixed material or mixed uh, content and the synthetic fabrics and fibers, those don't, those don't biodegrade and they, there's like this huge glut from like the fast fashion industry and it's, you know, people wear clothes, they wear them out quickly because they are, they're not meant to last. They're, they're, they're really just not. And, um, and so they get thrown away or they get donated, but you know, even, even the places that you donate old clothes to a lot of times they can't take or use um, all of the clothes, you know, all of what they're given. And so they still end up being thrown out. Um, and that was, you know, learning about that 
was was kind of you know eye opening because you think oh I'm doing something I'm sending it to Goodwill or um, maybe you know if your clothes are in good shape um, and they're still fairly current you send them up to um, what's that what's that website um, oh my gosh I just forgot the name anyway it's like it's like online thrift shopping basically. Uh, but you can send in your old clothes and you'll get credit, you know, you'll get like me a teensy bit, but you know, you'll get credit towards other, um, purchases. And, uh, I sent a big old bag of clothes that was still in really good shape. Um, you know, and only like one or two pieces were appropriate for their website. So yeah, the whopping 60 cents of credit was like, you know, I was less concerned about that than I was the fact that, oh my gosh, then all that, all the, all that fabric, all those clothes probably went who knows where, but they, you know, may have ended up in a landfill. So I've tried to be a little bit more conscious when I'm going through my closet. I give the things that I think will be beneficial to, you know, I drop them off at Goodwill or, or the um, donation boxes that are around town that benefit, um, like a children's hospital in Atlanta. We have those, those bins in different parking lots and stuff. Um, you know, I hope they're doing okay, but for ones that I think are questionable or things that, um, maybe I'm getting rid of it because there's a stain on it. Um, so it's not appropriate to send a goodwill or anybody. Um, it's become a rag <laughs> or, um, you know, it's damaged, it's torn or something. And I just don't feel like repairing it or, no point to, or maybe it can't be repaired. I've actually started, like I said, mentioned earlier, I've started saving those aside. And my idea is to put them into strips and then make like rag rugs out of them because at least then they're still being functional and those fabrics will do fine in a, in, in an environment like that. So yeah, and they can be washed and <laughs> everything. So it's all cool. But, um, but yeah, so that's why I did the stuffing the way I did, just kind of trying to be a little bit more efficient and conscious of what all's out there. Um, but yeah, so I still have a lot to attach. Um, I had to get everything mostly, uh, I've got the legs. So these are like the, the back, um, these are the back legs, kind of like the thigh and like the first joint. And then here's the leg that will that would be coming off of it. So he's going to be sitting down and then here's like the fr front shoulder. That's going to, you know, be like about there ish. <laughs> and then they sit when I was looking up reference photos and stuff, they sit like with their knees folded underneath them. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting, but yeah, I'm going to connect them with beads and, you know, make that a decorative as well. But after, but I also have a lot of hand stitching left to go on him. And this is the part where I don't want to attach the head too soon because I'm going to be, you know, turning them all around. Um, there are some areas that need reinforcement stitching and then crazy quilting itself just involves a lot of like decorative finishing stitches. It's not just making a, a, a scrap quilt or whatever it's um there's a little more to it there's some there's some decorative arts to it and I have a particular motif in mind that I want to put it on at least one side I haven't decided fully and I'm still debating I know I only have a week left but I'm still debating on whether or not um I will do it all with embroidery thread or if I will paint and then embellish with embroidery thread. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. It's still, I will decide soon. But these, this is how these projects go for me. Um, I start off with one plan and it morphs a little bit over time. And then, you know, even though this is going pretty much to plan, it's still a matter of, you know, seeing it in person, holding it in my hand and deciding what I want to do from there. You know. Sometimes the the project wants to be something else or you're, you're some way else. So, you know, yeah. So I got to deal with the leggies. That'll be um, assembling the legs and then hopefully like, like getting them joint on and jointed will be today's project. And then um, and then I can start with the more decorative stuff because then I'll know, you know, 
what's covered up. I mean, if something is going to be completely covered by a leg, I don't, I don't need to spend inordinate amounts of time doing decorative work that's, you know, that's going to be hidden. We have to be practical too with our efforts, work smarter, not harder, even in art. Ah, which, hey, that's as good a segue as anything. Let's move the, uh, the neck out of the way there. So today's brilliance, concept, theory, lesson, pick your pick, word of the day, word of the week, I don't know. Um, brilliance is pivoting. I was debating between two, and I just decided this is how it works. Brilliance is pivoting. Um... I had another great Saturday shift at Fuzzy Goat today at the yarn shop. Um, I love working there. I love my coworkers. Um, I, I I love getting to help people like plan a project. I got to do that for the first time, start to fit, you know, start to finish. But she, a woman had come in because it was her birthday month. And, um, you know, there's a customer reward for that. Well, little reward program. Um, and so she wanted to make sure to stop in and, uh, she was looking at the yarn and looking at some samples that are hung up on the, sh around the shop. And she fell in love with a particular sample and it was a sample, I believe that had been purchased from the man, you know, from the, the, the yarn manufacturer or had been sent. Uh, I don't know if it was, you know, if they, Anyway, I don't I don't know the ins and outs, but anyway, it was not one of the shop samples that someone either in the shop or, you know, or in the community had knitted and therefore was tagged with like the what yarn and um what weight and what pattern they used and so forth. So it meant that to find and and, and to help her um create something, you know, the something that like that using the the characteristics that she liked about it um we got to we got to hunt up a pattern we got to find something for her and goodness knows i hope i hope i hope we found a pattern that that she enjoys knitting um it looked gorgeous um and it had the 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 particular like detail that she had fallen in love with and um and then you know i got to help her you know pick out some yarn and and the, the right fiber and you know, and then someone else came in because they um they'd ordered a book from, you know, online from someone else, from someone else, not not our shop. Um, and it had gotten lost in transit. And she's like, rather than trying to reorder it again, I'm you know, I found out, oh hey, there's a there's a yarn store nearby and they have it. So she came in and we had a nice chat and I was able to, you know, to help her and answer some questions and, and help her find what she needed and that was like a really great way to end the day. And it was busy. Oh gosh, it was so busy today. There were there were only a couple of brief, brief lulls um for the little over like three and a half hours I was there. But oh, it's so fun being around creative people and and being around people who, you know, they're there to they're there to lose themselves in a fun knitting project or they're there to help people do that. You know, we had classes going on. I mean, it's just, it was so much fun. I, I, I really do. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm tired again. I don't think I will succumb to a nap this time. Knock on wood. Um, you know, yeah, I was on my feet for two and a half hours. So, you know, my little piggy toes are, you know, a little, little baby toes are, are, are a little, you know, it's like, okay, they're ready to get out of the shoes and, and and I'm ready to, you know, change into just loungewear or something instead of the the outfit I wore to work. But oh, it's so much fun working there. And I really, really enjoy it. And that is that is a pivot that I was able to do. Now, part of me says, you know, there's like or, or there's like a mindset that that almost says well, you know, it's like, even though it's a, it's a part-time job, it's, it's not even like, you know, it's not even 20 hours a week. And that's 
part of the benefit because it still leaves me plenty of time to do my own projects or work on the book. I did work, I did get some writing done this week too. Um, but there's a mindset that says, okay, you quit your corporate, your desk job so that you could focus on writing and art. And, and so you, you need to be doing that 24 seven, 365. And okay, I do sleep. Not that that prevents me from, I mean, I can't tell you how many dreams I've had where I've been working in my sleep. Um, although more often than not, it's dreams of like compilations of like other work, not the work I do here at home. You know, but I am more, I, yeah, I do. I work, but you know, it's like, there's a train of thought that says I should be like, just doggedly pursuing that no ifs, ands, or buts. And, you know, whereas applying for, and then accepting this job, this part-time job, well, this is a deterrent. This is, this is taking time away and this is, but no, for me, it's a pivot. It's, I am still doing what I set out to do, which is engage in creative work. I happen to be doing it part of that time in a retail setting now. And I'm okay with that. Um, that pivot is going to help me do other things. And, you know, the dopamine that, that my brain gets while I'm at work and, and, or thinking up, you know, like yesterday I went on a whole hyper-focus thinking up a potential event, um, for the shop and my little, my little event planner brain, you know, it's part of my brain that's been, you know, just kind of hanging out in the background, <laughs> not planning parties or anything for several years. <laughs> went we we can play with this and uh you know i'm getting to use i'm getting to use skills that i don't have to you know i don't have to or are not called for when i'm writing a book or when i'm creating art um and so that pivot is allowing me to use my skills and flex a little of the left brain as well as the right brain and i'm good with that and so sometimes Things don't turn out exactly the way you think some, you know, and I knew that, that getting a part-time job or maybe even, you know, a full-time job, if it came to it, you know, if it, if it comes to it, um, you know, but just knowing better about, you know, what I want to do and, and what's important to spend time on, um, you know, but even still being able to pivot and, and accept this job and, and go to work and look forward to it, even though I did not want to get out of bed this morning, it was, it was chilly this morning and I did not want to get out from under the covers. Ooh, I really didn't, but I'm glad I did because, you know, I, I, I got to interact with cool people today and, you know, hopefully I helped, hopefully I, I helped. And it's not just about helping the bottom line of of from whoever owns the company the way a lot of my other you know my old work used to be it's about helping people be creative and help helping people access their creativity and do things that that make them happy and that's amazing and so being able to to use to do that god it's so cool so yeah, I think that that's what brilliance is this week is brilliance is, is pivoting when it's the right time. So whether it's your right time or not, whether you're ready to pivot or not, <laughs> just because these things are signs of brilliance, are, are moments of brilliance, are facets of brilliance, it does not mean that everybody has to do every, everything. This is coming from my experience and my perceptions and what I'm learning along the way. I wouldn't expect your journey to be the same, but it doesn't matter. It's okay that your journey isn't the same. If we were all the same, the world would be an entirely too boring place. Instead, we each have our own wells of brilliance inside of us. And by showing you the ups and downs of my efforts to, to truly access my own brilliance, 
and, and live a brilliant life and, and live the life I want to and the one that I design, not someone else. Then I hope that I am, you know, along the way that you're getting something out of it for you too. Because ultimately what I want is for you to be able to show the world your own brilliance. That said, I will see you next week. It will be Easter weekend for those that celebrate. Um, And uh, so let's try not to go on sugar binges. (laughs) Unless that's what, you know, unless that's what you need. You know, hey, all things in moderation, including moderation. (laughs) But until next week, have a great, have a great time if possible. Have an okay time, if that's all that's possible. Take care of yourself. If you've got the space and bandwidth, you know, take care of someone else too, but take care of you. You're important. The world would be a sadder place without you. All right. Bye.